This is the post-game show presented by the Maroon Club. Here's Mike. Well, Lafayette, they came out. We started at the beginning of the game. They had to attack, and they attacked down the field early in the game. This is a throw at 37-yarder to Joey Chenoweth. He's been big. He's had over 115 yards receiving in the last two weeks. That set up the field goal, the 28-yarder by Jacob Bissell, who's now 8 for 12 on the year. A blocked punt tried to set up Georgetown. That's Christian Tate, who later left the game with a knee injury, and that sets up a field goal at the other end for Darmstadter. So you got a 3-3 game. Both teams really struggling offensively to find a rhythm. Lafayette came out the second half. They had 30 minutes to try to put this one away, and I had to get uh, talk about getting Matt Morazic involved. He had a bunch of catches in the second half. Dylan Wadsworth had a big one down the middle for 17 yards, and then he picks up a big first down here with that big body. So Drew Reed struggled a little bit early, went through a stretch where he was six for six. Could be the biggest play in the game right there. Francis down the field makes a big play and then sets up Drew Reed for a little change of direction. The touchdown put Lafayette up 10 to three. The tip ball, the secondary played well. Draylon James steps up from his senior safety position. And this run by Tyler West, look at that acceleration kind of hit behind those big linemen. He's gonna make it 17 to three, a couple of punts back and forth. You know, Lafayette did it. They did it defensively today. They did it offensively. Remember, that's a good Georgetown defense. So Frank said, well, you got a taste of today what we can do. This wasn't a bad mm -hmm. defensive team. This was a Lafayette team that found some rhythm offensively today. All right, Michael, thank you very much. As uh, Mike and I and uh, John Bowman, we'll see you at Colgate in a couple of weeks. But for now, we send it back down to John Leone and company to finish out the ball game. Yes, sir, Gary. Thank you, uh, Gary and Michael, for a, a, a usual terrific job on the broadcast. And, boy, it's a lot more fun when they win, isn't it, guys? And, Absolutely. Uh, oh, man, I'll, I'll tell you what. Maurice, uh, let's go to you first. The, the defensive performance was just off the charts today. I think it started up front, but it certainly uh, gave those guys in the defensive secondary a chance to kind of uh, unleash a little bit. I mean, the defense was actually fantastic today. They did a little bit of everything. We got, some, we got a tip there early in the game. We got a couple of sacks. We got an interception. I mean, the only thing we didn't do was block a kick. <laughs> Everything else we got to go <laughs> there, there are three points, and I'll tell you, you know, we, we, we picked Jerry Poe, but, my gosh, it could have been Bo Bosch. It could have been – so, you know, I, I love the uh, – uh, Yasir Thomas made the transition nicely yeah. to safety. He made a couple plays. Uh, uh, it, it was really uh, what we were looking for uh, from the defense. It was, it was a true team effort today. Uh, what's, what's great is, obviously, you picked Jerry Poe for – uh, the player of the game there, and, and he's a sophomore. We talked about it a little bit earlier on, like who's going to be the guy or guys that can step up and kind of rally the troops and get guys going, and it's great to see it coming from the young, yeah, once they guys. Once they got that lead, you could see, uh, and you and I, you guys, we both, all three of us talked about uh, the energy or lack thereof sometimes on the sideline, and that defense really lit a fire, and Phil, once they seemed to get that, they really fed off each other. Uh, Frank was persistent in, in, in pounding the football. It opened up the pass game a little bit. Talk about Tyler West, your impressions of him. Well, just great, you know, coming out there, uh, just running north and south. Uh, you know, it was really nice to see some push finally at that on that offensive line. And like you said, it just feeds on itself. You know, you start to get some confidence. Uh, you see those O linemen out there pushing guys around, and that's what you want to see as a running back. You know, a little bit of room to run. Yeah, and that was my question to Tyler. I said, you know, is it your style that gives them confidence, or is it, uh, uh, you know? those guys up front just 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 kind of taking the bull by the horns and finally getting something done um the the uh complimentary football we talk about it <laughs> there was no question about the fact that uh once we got that lead especially the big catch by francis down the field yes. that put us up a score the energy was palpable on sideline oh well, absolutely i think we talked about it a little bit in the you know at, at halftime you know uh the ability to get the ball down the field a little bit and that's going to open up the run game a little bit and it, it certainly did i think you know georgetown may might have mailed it in a little bit you know towards the end of the game but obviously it had its effect uh, we were able to both run and pass the ball and that's again what Frank Devon is looking for in terms of complimentary uh, you know offense yeah and, and, and Maurice when you when you're uh, playing against a team who hangs its hat on defense and special teams and now they're playing with a deficit uh, you're a defensive player uh, and you can do what you can do, but you can't score a lot of points. No, you, you would like to think that you can. Uh, <laughs> can we get some defensive touchdowns? Can we get some kickoff returns? But at the end of the day, you know, it, it does weigh on you mentally if you're consistently behind in every game. To have a lead, to have some momentum, 
to feel like your guys on the opposite end of the football can actually get it done, I mean, it, it, it lightens the load a little bit. And when you were uh, an All-American linebacker here, Maurice, talk about the guys, some of the guys that you played with who were in front of you mm -hmm. uh, and, and the chemistry between those different levels of the defense. I, well, I, I can't, if I will be here all night if I start naming <laughs> the guys that played in front of me because you, you, as, as, a, as a middle linebacker, or as a running back, it all starts up front. You can't run the ball without your offensive line. I can't make tackles if the, the guys aren't, you know, taking up blockers in front of me. I mean, I'm 5'10", I need holes to see through the line of scrimmage. So, I mean, I've, I've played with a, with, a, with a bunch of great players, both on a defensive line, linebackers, safeties, and, you know, it, you, you need everybody. And we saw that happening today. Listen, I'm going to uh, close out with the, uh, the same question for both of you. Uh, it feels good to win. Lafayette's got off the schnei. You saw how emotional Coach Tavani was at the end. They got a bye week. If you're a player, you want to lace them up next week or do you need the week? It's really good and bad, you know, because, again, you want to take that momentum and just, you know, keep going with it. But that being said, you know, it's also nice to have a bye week to get some of your injured guys back and, you know, we've been pretty decimated <laughs> yeah, over the last yeah. couple of years with, with injuries. And so it's nice to, to have a bye week to get those some guys healthy. I have a sense, Maurice, that you want to keep the motor running. I, that's, a, that's a great sense. Yeah, you think about this. You, we, we, we had this conversation a, a bunch in college. You spend the entire summer here working out. You spend the entire spring working out. You're getting up at 6 o'clock in the morning for morning runnings in the spring. You're getting killed all year round for 11 <laughs> games a year. The last thing you want is to have a week off. I said, Let's play 12 games every year at least. Well, anybody who ever saw Maurice play knows he did not like to take time off. That will do it from us. My thanks, of course, to Gary Laubach and Mike Joseph for a job very well done. And my two cohorts here who always make me look good as much as that's possible. <laughs> we will see you after next week from Hamilton, New York, when the Lafayette Leopards take on the Colgate Raiders. For it, for now, that's it for for us, we'll see you in a couple of weeks.